Welcome back to The Forge. Thank you for joining us again today. So today's essential skills lesson is forging a heart. So today we're going to start with 200 mil of 12 mil square. And in this little process, there is a forged square corner. There are two chisel tapers and two matching scrolls. And that's the important thing for today. So I'm going to mark this with a centre punch in the centre and then we're going to warm it up. Mm -hmm. So step one, let's mark the centre of this bar. Now, as I said before, we've got 200 mil here of 12 mil square. Take my centre punch, nice big centre punch in the centre of this one. I want to be able to see it when it's hot. We need to reference it. So there we go, into the fire. Let's get it warming up. Okay, so let's isolate that heat. Spin it around, do the same on the other side. Okay, into the pritchel. Now what I can do here is simply pull it over. I don't want it quite at 90 degrees, a little bit off will be great. And my centre punch mark is nicely in the centre of that bend. So the next stage with this is to warm up the corner. What I'm going to do then is quench the, the top half and we're going to upset that material back into a square corner because at the moment we've got a lazy open bend and we want nice sharp defined square corner. So out of the fire, cool down the piece and we don't want to bend. Even about half an inch above the corner and then I can come in at 90 degrees and initially I don't want to go too far because otherwise I'll knock my centre punch out my corner. So, I've done that side. What I'm going to do next is a quick heat on the other side, do exactly the same again. Okay, so, same again on the other side. Quick quench. Got to be quick here. And we're repeating the same action. Whoop, centre punch on this side this time. What I'm also doing is hammering and pulling my hammer blow over to the edge, because what I don't want to do is to but over bend this corner and cause myself a problem. Now I'm going to spin it around and do the same on the other side. And then you will see that as we work from both sides, the centre punch itself does move. So I need to come back over to this edge and pull that back and the centre punch has returned to the centre of that corner. So um, I'm going to repeat this process a few times and we're going to pull a lot more material into that corner. Now my bend is slightly over bent, so what I'm going to do quickly is just open it up a little. I don't want to create a uh, fold in that centre, so I'm just going to open up both sides. There we go, now I can quench, like so, and we can knock that material back down. The thing that I can do, come in on my flat, and as you can see it wants to bend at this centre section. So it's up to me to straighten that out and get that nicer. And we'll do the same on the other side. And I know it looks a mess, but it'll be all right in the end. So I'm just going to straighten this up a little. Right, let's do a quench. And knock it back into itself. There we go, looks a lot better. Now it wants to be 12 mil in that corner. And obviously it swells up in all directions. So the other thing we can do is bring a hammer down here. I'm gonna need some heat in this corner, but we can thin that out to 12 mil. Um, I think I've probably got enough meat in that corner now. So we don't need any more upsets. Okay, so a little bit of heat in this corner. Tidy that up a little. And I'll spin it round to the other side. Right, there we go guys, there's the first step finished. That's the square corner in place. Uh, pretty happy with how that looks. It's pretty much 90 degrees. Um, we've got the material all the way down to the corner and most importantly, the centre punch is still visible and it's in the centre there, or near enough. Okay, so we've got the corner in place, which is the first step. The next step is to forge two chisel tapers that are gonna form the actual um, halves of the heart. Um, so we want the taper to taper from pretty much the very center of the corner all the way to the very tip. 
and it's really important that you draw these out to the same length. So get yourself some chalk and mark the amber when you've done the first one before spinning it around and doing the next. Okay, so my bar's nice and off. And I want to work from two sides to force my chisel taper because I don't want it swelling out wider than the bar. Let's work that taper further back. And I've changed to a pair of farrier tongs because they give me a nice tight grip on this bar and the nibs are nice and short so I can get closer to the anvil. Okay, so there's one side done. What I'm actually going to do next though is just take a little heat on the end and just square that up a little bit. Lose the, the radius that's on the end of there. That'll only take one heat. Okay, so a quick tap on the end just to square things up a little bit. That's better. Tidy up any upset. Dress that in. Okay, so I've just refined that taper, tidied it up, taken any hammer marks out, any lumps and bumps as well, and obviously we've squared off that front end. So what I need to do now is mark the length, and I'm just going to put a chalk mark on my anvil. And where am I going to do it? We'll do it over here. You want to mark your anvil out of the way. You don't want it somewhere where you're going to be working, because otherwise you'll rub that chalk mark off with a hammer blow, and then you won't know where you're starting from. So I'm going to spin this round in my tongs, Grab the corner from the other side, and we do exactly the same on the other end. Boom. One eat. All right, there we go. So we've got a square corner forge. We've got our two tapers on there. They're both the same length, which is important. The next stage with this is to form these into our little scrolls and hopefully they meet in the middle. Okay, nice and hot. Now over to the far edge and start off gently. Get that scroll started. Once we've got a little bit, we can then turn it up the right way. And we're going to keep having a look at it. And it's nice and even. Fortunately, these aren't the easiest scrolls to form because you've got the other leg in the way. But that's just the way it goes in blacksmithing sometimes. So we've got it started. I'm going to take another heat and we're going to repeat that process. Okay, so let's keep scrolling these up. Now keep turning them up, having a look to see what sort of shape you're getting. Make sure you're happy with it. Okay, so scrolling up a little bit more. A nice bit of shape in there. Remember to keep it flat. You don't want your scrolls twisted on you. Keep turning it over and checking it. Now, that side's done, I'm happy with that. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly draw around this so I can compare the other side. And this is where things get awkward, folks. You've already got a scroll in the way. Okay, again, over the pick this time, because I need that space. Let's scroll it up to match. Shape. Well, we're about there, so a little bit tighter perhaps. Now that work. All right, more bend. Okay, so we need some more bend lower down on this one. And this gets really awkward now because that other scroll is in the way. There we go, so that's the bend where I needed to. There we go. There we are guys, one finished heart. Well there we are guys, there's the finished heart. Nicely formed up, nice awkward project for today. You've got your forge square corner, you've got your two chisel tapers, and of course your two scrolls that have got to match, otherwise it looks wrong. 
So I'm pretty happy with how that came out. Hope you guys have found that easy enough to follow. Um, let us know what you think in the comments. Um, luckily, we're coming out of lockdown, so if you fancied coming along to a forging class and, and learning in person, you're more than welcome to come along to the forge. And um, as always, you can follow us on Instagram, support the channel through Patreon. Um, remember to click like and subscribe, and we'll see you here next time in the workshop. Cheers, guys.